okay hi hello welcome to our wonderful facebook live today so hope everyone is so excited to learn more about our topic today so coming to our topic today is autism always unique totally intelligent and sometimes mysterious so let me introduce ourselves first before proceeding further i'm pravina a clinical audiologist of sound life hearing and proud to introduce miss elia the founder and chief audiologist of sound life hearing hi everyone hi yeah okay hi miss elia and hi, we have jody from well rehab she's an occupational therapist and we have shalini speech therapist from well rehab as well we welcome both of them to this live today hi everyone hi shalini hi farmina hi miss alia hi miss jodi hi shalini hi jodi hi 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 jodi okay so hi. let's move on so what are we going to talk about autism today what are we going to learn today let's start a bit of introduction about autism first and goes with the roles of professionals continues with the test done to assess them and with management to improve their quality of life so do you know anyone handling kids with autism can always welcome them to join our live today in facebook and also youtube okay so let's uh today we're going to talk about the topics of agenda is role of professionals assessments and managements so next so here we have a multidisciplinary team with us today who works closely to treat kids with autism so before proceeding to learn more about them and their roles let's see brief idea about what is autism okay autism is also called as autism spectrum disorder asd is a complicated condition that includes problems with communication and behavior so they have trouble with communication and understanding on what other people think and feel so this makes it hard for them to express themselves either with words or through gestures facial expressions and touch so they have problem with learning as well so their skills might develop unevenly for example they could have trouble communicating but he unusually good at art music math or memory so because of this they might do especially well on tests of analysis or problem solving so now next let's move on to the symptoms of autism which is mainly seen okay a lack of eye contact a narrow range of interest or intern's interest in certain topics doing something over and over like repeating words or phrases is mostly seen and high sensitivity to sounds touches smells not looking or listening to other people not giving attention so not wanting to be held or cuddled trouble adapting to changes in routine so these are the symptoms of autism which is mainly seen okay let's come back to the multidisciplinary professionals we have here with us today so what is their role will be the first question in all our mind currently so what do they do to treat kids with autism let's hear the answer from jodi occupational therapist first and then followed with shalini speech therapist okay hi so for the roles of occupation therapist actually we will first like evaluate and setting goal based on the child ability so usually we have done our general assessment for the kids in, include the area of like physical sensory cognitive and also and also daily living skill and is it uh we also have a key roles key roles take part in the early detections of audition by knowing what the symptoms and also can also recommendation for the therapy such as like speech or occupational therapy and also after after evaluation we will provide a individualized intervention plan according to the child ability 
In addition, we also, we also consult and collaborate with our family members and also some teachers in like special needs school or in the in normal school. We actually consult that how they take, take care of the of the child and make them like more com comfortable in their their learning learning procedures. Okay, so let look how what is the like normal development of, of the child is usually for like zeros to like four years. So here is a simple simple like chart for them for the parents to know what is the is the normal normal development for the child. So around the six month, the child's able to like like to play the social play such as like pick a fools or also like able to respond to the sound, like like when you say name your child's name, they will respond to you. And around one years old, the child may start to start to work, and also know some simple gestures such as like say hi and bye and also sometimes the kids will will copy you during the play such as like clapping hands or like or like like say bye bye and also some kids will start to like say say mama and dada and around one and a half years say they start uh, the kids start to like have some social interaction with you so when you when you show something they will look at look at the things you show to them and also start like some singles words to get what they, they want and around the two years that the kids will also start to like follow instructions simple instruction and also for the cross motor skill they will like try to kick balls and throw balls and in language they will start to like use two to four words in a sentence and will show show some interest if they want and around the three years old, they will have start like start the sense, uh, start to use the four to five words in a sentence, and also able to copy adults and start to join with the adults and play together. And around four years, that they, they will be able to follow three to four step commands, and also will take care some take care of the cell such as eat with a cell and dress up, strip, uh, dress independently. Okay, so let let look next. Okay, for the end, actually for the kids like audition because some would just now the pre privina also introduced some sensory issues of the kids such as some you will notice that the audition kids will sometimes like avoid the very loud so loud sounds or avoid avoid some like climbing up. This is because of the sensory sensory system our sensory part and this will also cause they like have like speech delay because in speech with a with more advanced you have to know how to control their control their mouth and how to speak yeah so the sensory sensory part is like important for for the kids to learn 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 how to work how to do activity how to throw through the balls and you know Addition also important for like that let them to pay attention and learnings in their life. Okay, here is the sim uh some briefly introduction to the autism that part in the autism kids. Okay, thank you. Arena, unmute yourself. So sorry. Okay. So thank you, Jody, for the wonderful explanation. So we will move on to Shalini, speech therapist, to explain her part. Thank you, Prada. Hello, everyone. I'm a speech therapist in the Rehabilitation Center. Um, as per you know, that we, speech language pathologists, we work closely with families, teachers, schools, colleges, and uh, the sorry, sorry, the do you mind to adjust your speaker for a while? I think there's some noise. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe speak louder. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Mostly SLP, we work closely with the family. 
and our teachers, the preschool teachers, other professionals, audiologists, and occupational therapists. So children with autism often have a speech delay. They won't, there is not speech delay alone, alone do not mean your child has autism. Autistic speech delay occurs along with other communication issues such as gestures and not responding to their name and not showing their interest for connecting with other people. So mostly SLP will play a key role in the early intervention treatment. So we therapists will work one-to-one -one with them or group-wise, it depends on the individual. The role of speech-language therapy mostly will address the challenges with language and communication. Will help the child with autism to improve their verbal, non-verbal, and social communication. The overall goals will help the, the child communicate in more useful and functional way. So there is some normal milestone. If you ask, what is the normal speech milestone for my kids? So there is a. So let's see the first stages of the speech. Um, normally, for six, four to six months, your child will, should be having a cooing sound such as R, ah, E, the vowel sounds. They should be having vocal play sounds around with them or bubbling sounds, the ba ba ba, ma ma ma, like that. So, around seven to twelve months, they should be having familiar sounds with them. They should be increasing the intonation. And this sounds should be combined within to the uh, surrounding sounds with the families. And to 12 to 20 months, around one and a half years, the child should recognize their name, can gesture to say bye, hi, non-verbal communication, pointing to the objects, single words should be there for, from the child. There should be 10 to 20 words at approximately by 18 months of the child. And they should be able to listen to the simple instruction. By 2 to 3 years, they should have 150 words to 200 words. And they should have understanding to the simple directions and simple questions. Okay, move on to the speech-related signs, early signs of the autism. They not only the speech delay, we, we might having some of the signs, early signs, such as like they will having slow or fail to respond to their name or to the verbal attempt. Uh, other than that, they will fail to imitate others' actions and mostly the child with autism will slow or fail to develop the non-verbals. Uh, I got to tell you previously also, it's like the gesturing, pointing. That is all should be achieved by the one year of age for the child. And mostly the child is not interested to the people. It more shows interest to the objects or things. This is all our early signs mostly. And they will having a one word, single words to them and that and might be repeated, repeated, we call it as a echolalia. And they some child they will have a use words that seems very odd, that is out of the place, usage out of the place or have special meaning that only the familiar person knows what is the child is communicating. This is all our early signs of autism so if you find it this is all is there to your child then please get a early intervention early assessment we in well rehabilitation center we have a general assessment when you come in we, we go through with the general assessment to observe clinically the child having a speech delay due to what factor that is not only 
uh, the speech as I said, not only a speech will show your child is having autism, then there will be uh, other factors will carry along with that. So in that, we'll carry out, rule out what is the problem and they might be having some of behavioral associated problem, attention span problems, sensory problem, other, other and others problem also. So this we will rule out and we go to the easiest way, goal and everything. Thank you. Okay, okay. so <laughs> that I, was I, uh, yeah. No, it's okay, Farina. That was a great explanation from Jody and Shalini. So thank you. And let's go on since we have our chief audiologist here, Ms. Elia. Let's uh, us ask her the most frequently asked question by the parents of autistic kids is hearing test needed and why it is needed. So, Ms. Okay, Elia, answer. Thank you, Pramina. Before I go into that, maybe uh, a lot of people here may, may, be, may not be recognized as the role of audiologists. So, I would like to play a short video just to let you all understand what is our role in general. We are the health. Uh, qualified hearing professionals uh, that deal with anything related to hearing. Yeah, so that is so simple. So basically, as an audiologist, our role is we will perform hearing tests. And then if let's say we detect any hearing loss, then we will provide the management of hearing loss, which is using hearing aids. We help our clients to regain their hearing ability. So uh, so next, like to answer what is uh, uh, what Perina have asked, why is hearing test is important, especially for the autism kids? So uh, from what I understand is that usually in government hospitals, the pediatrician or clinic assistant, they will be the first uh, person who do the, all the uh, development check for see whether the child follow the milestone as what Shalini or Jody have pre uh, presented earlier. So if let's say any of them have any uh, symptoms like speech delay, which is we, we are unsure why is the speech delay happen to the kids? So sometimes it could be due to autism, but sometimes it could be due to the hearing loss. So for as an audiologist, we always wanted to check uh, and rule out any hearing loss happen in the autism kids so that we understand what is their hearing levels. And then from there, we know that uh, if let's say after the checking, after the hearing test, we knew that uh, they have no hearing loss, then we can focus fully on their um, more, we can focus more on the intensive therapy without worry so much that, oh, this child is not responding to the therapy because of they are having some potential hearing problem. So that is the, the intention now. So uh, usually we, I would strongly suggest that for any child who presented with speech delay, um, they should undergo all three uh, assessment, which is from the audiological assessment, the OT occupational therapies assessment, and also the speech therapies assessment. Okay, so as we tested uh, some of the hearing children between the age of six or to seventeen years, so this is one of the research that we found on online, and there are half of them. Uh, child with the hearing problem actually also presented with symptoms of uh, autism as well. So it seems that those children with ASD also have hearing difficulty to hear certain uh, specific frequency, which is at 1000 to 2000 hertz, which is a mid frequency, and which is important for our uh, speech processing. 
So that is why uh, even for myself, I also realized that like today I met one kids um, who came back, who, who I, I met the kids who I follow up uh, since 2018. So the kids now is five, uh, is six years, five years old. Uh, sorry, it's a six years old. So I fitted the hearing aids uh, for him since age of two, two half. Then after that, uh, about three half also the child is actually presented with the autism uh, behavior. So so it, it means that actually some of the kids they have hearing loss, but at the same time, uh, they also have these commodities, which is uh, autism as well. So and we understand that if let's say any one of them uh, having this hearing uh, problem, the auditory impairment, which is the hearing impairment, uh, one, five, uh, one of our five important signals is impaired, then uh, it can cause other de uh, development delay as well, uh, such as language as visit. Okay. Then we also, uh, uh, the reason why we want to also do hearing tests for any kids presented with speech delay because uh, some of the kids that doesn't make the eye contact because they can't hear. So there are some overlapping symptoms of hearing loss with the child with autism. So for example, child that does not make the eye contact or they, they have a very bad behavior, um, uh, how is it, behavior problem like pull away from hearts, don't want contact or only use hand gesture to indicate what they want does not want to communicate using the facial expression or or insist of sameness, nothing can be changed. All this uh, is actually more on like autism, but it doesn't mean that child who don't respond to sounds uh, or uh, are also having hearing loss. So that is why uh, we would like to do more tests to get their result before we can proceed further. Lah. So what are the hearing tests can be done for the child with autism or even with a child with any uh, speech delay? So is it the child having some hearing problem? So usually as an audiologist, we will perform either objective or subjective tests. So the objective test is more like uh, what I listed here. We have diplomatry measurement to check on their middle ear status. We have OAE, auto acoustic emission to check on their outer, uh, the inner ear status. And we also have behavioral observation, audiometry, and also ABR, auditory brainstorm response, usually is done during, uh, in using sedation. So subjective hearing tests, in which we require the child to respond to us, we have VRA, visual reinforcement audiometry, and also condition uh, play audiometry. So test evaluate in sound life is we usually will perform uh, these four tests first, which is uh, um, something like otoscopic examination is that we check on their outer ear and see their eardrum or even their canal, is it uh, having some problem? If let's say their ear canal is clear and then their eardrum is normal, so what we do next is we will perform the next test. The next test could be like OAE. If let's say the child, um, cannot sit still, then we just use this uh, test, which is take about five to 10 minutes to get some response from their outer hair cell in the cochlea. So from there, we can actually estimate whether the child has significant hearing loss or no significant hearing loss. Then the diponometry test is something we use to check their middle ear status. Um, one thing to share over here is that a lot of the children um, maybe 10% of the normal children, normal hearing children, they are also tend to develop this middle ear symptom, which is uh, middle ear effusion, we call it MEE. So when they have MEE, they are, they are behind their ear is actually will accumulate a lot of fluid and this fluid will cause the barrier where sound cannot travel from outer ear to the inner ear smoothly. So this can cause some hearing loss. However, Good thing about this hearing problem is it can be addressed by ENT and after maybe surgery or medication, their hearing can be get back to normal. Whereas uh, other tests that we have is including also uh, VRA, condition play, and also uh, ABR. So either three of either three of these tests is actually one uh, consider the uh, how to say the the 
proper hearing assessment that we should have done. And then after that, uh, we will, uh, and also we will do for those kids, see whether they can respond uh, or they cannot respond to us. If let's say, um, for example, for kids between six to 24 months, we can actually perform VRA. But if let's say the child cannot sit still, maybe they have also some behavioral problem. So what we will do is that we will straight away direct them to do the ADR, which is the last one. Then usually this ADR, we will do it um, when the child is asleep or under the sedation. So the child no need to respond to us at all. And then whereas for the conditional play audiometry, uh, usually this test can be done for kids, I would say between three to six years old. But if some of the kids is like they really reject the earphone or they cannot sit still, then again, we will also channel them to do the ABR. So as my last time when I worked in the hospital, I used to test a lot of the kids which is suspect autism and a lot of time their results are always normal. The test that I always perform for them is uh, ABR because they cannot sit still and then they cannot really cooperate during the sessions. Uh. Okay. Then ultimately uh, from these three tests, what the what is the result we want to get? We want to get the audiogram. So from this audiogram, we can see whether the child is having normal hearing or even having some mild or moderate hearing problem. So of course, if let's say they have some hearing loss, then we need to address their hearing, uh, hearing loss problem. So we will introduce the parents to fit the hearing aid for the child. And then uh, over here, you can see some of them is actually having this uh, something like ABC. So this one, we call it speech banana. Ultimately, we hope that every child, their hearing is actually at 20 or below, which is around this area. So if let's say their hearing is between 20 and below, then meaning to say they can hear all the speech sound clearly. Normally, our uh, voice is around at the level of 60 or 55 to 70 like that. Like. So 60 is generic. But if a child having some hearing problem, what happens is that um, their hearing could be at mild level or moderate level. So a lot of the speech will be, become very soft. Then this can actually also affect their attention pain to speech and they cannot really uh, learn well from the therapies. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a highlight test. Uh, usually what I will do more for the autism kids is this ABR test. Uh. But however, now ABR test is not uh, available in sound life because we need a multi team. We need a pediatrician to give the sedation. So usually this test, uh, if let's say uh, we in our clinic, we, we attempted the OAE, we attempted the the uh, the play audiometry, we cannot perform the test, then we will channel, refer this patient out to hospital that can perform this test so that we can get their result. Okay, so yeah, back to you, Pravina. Yep. So that was a very crystal clear explanation by Miss Elia from Sound Life Hearing. So let us hear from Jody about the therapies they do to treat child with autism. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for the occupational therapy, usually we use some activities like to help them to like pay attention, to help uh, help them like to pay attention, able to sit still in order, in, uh, in also like collaborate with the therapist in order that have can learn anything. So usually the activity we give like is usually based on like sensory based activity activity such as like game ball or swim, and this. Through this activity, we can like help them to regulate their sensory, make them to alert or keep calm in order that before they can able to sit still and learn what they have to learn. And also for the motor skill, because some of the sensory issue also will cause them like they will delay in gross in motor skills such as like gross motor and fine motor. Such as you can like sometimes you can see the child like cannot like riding the bicycles even that she uh, even the child is like four to five years old so this is maybe caused by the co uh, the problems of coordination so we'll also train 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 into the this skill in order they can like after that it uh, when they go like bigger and others they will have also have to learn this skill to 
uh, this skill when they grow up, when they want to go to school and they have to learn like PE activities and make, them, make sure they can catch up their academic skill and also we also help in like handwriting. Yeah, because some like lack of, of coordination, they will cannot like hold the pencil properly or cannot like cannot control the pencil. So after after they write, you cannot like understand what they are writing. So besides motor skill, also train like cognitive, such as the most important part is like attentions and their behaviors, and also like make them to like able to pay attention. And some some may some autism kids will also like show like some like learning difficulties they will they this uh this man caught them because they cannot sit still and pay attention like what what he have to do in, in the activity and also the next one we also train is like like kids like activity of daily living such as like toilet trainings and also like dressing but trainings and these skills and so they will after that they go to like primary school they will be more independent and not like not like co teacher to help and every time needs other other people to help them. So the next one important is also the social and communication skill. Because like just now it uh mentioned that the some autism kids will have like lack of like communication and social skill and they did not like insurance to the uh, to the to the people. So in our therapy we also like help them to learn how to social with other people or, or how to play with other people and also like interact with 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 kids or with the therapy or with the parents. So if the child able to like follow instructions and and have like good potential uh, good potential then then we have can refer them to like good therapy drunk with the other kids. And in the group they will learn more such as like turn techniques or like how to share teams. So this usually the occupational therapies will do in the in the therapy sessions. In the most important for this we will work together with the parents of the teachers so so we will give like home program for them in order that they can like to do at home so we will see the progress more more constantly so not like come to therapies like only like like four to five minutes and go back to uh did not do anything so the progress will well well not very like cannot see very well like so it is very important to us like for co collaborate with the parents uh, so here is the like some interventions we do in the therapy session okay thank you okay Thank you, Jody. I also learned a lot from you, Jody. Thank you. <laughs> As an audiologist, uh, I think sometimes we do have some kids. Uh, uh, wow, I used to like last two weeks, I have one kid just throw tantrum, don't want to sit down. I want to put on headphone and they cannot put it in. So I also feel like very tension with the kids. So I, I believe uh, kids with this kind of behavior is actually under OT uh, to handle, right? Uh, yeah, we were like, structure structure them first and let them oh this one this one you have to follow then then after like few session they have the concept okay i want to follow here and what is the rule when i want to attend the class or attend the therapies oh i yeah. see so but usually what is the timing uh for them to actually from like cannot sit still in the class or cannot sit still follow the instruction then they become able to do the instruction follow like sit still and then do the whatever instruction given by the teacher or even given by by us like uh, clinician to do perform the hearing test oh usually uh if like if, if the if the parents like quite cooperate with us then we can see the see the child after like three four sessions or like mm. uh, after one two two months then we'll see, you'll see we will see the progress of the child can like sit uh like come and come and sit and wait for you. Uh, this is you say like one two months. If the if the if the duration they come like they come and stop, they come and stop, and we will like not see very see the progress. Obviously, like maybe they need more time to like structure it. <laughs> okay, so meaning the parents really have to follow whatever uh you all therapists to suggest uh. So come here not just to talk. 
but it's actually to do therapy, follow their instruction, follow to do whatever, carry out whatever actions that require, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Then we also can like share the share the experience, what, what they have the problems in 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 the house and how how the programs that meets luck, then we can share and like give some suggestion for in order they can help 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 to homes and like try to like compliance with it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that was a great discussion in between. So we gain a lot of information. So now let's hear it from Shalini, speech therapist from Bell Rehab, about the therapies done by them for autistic kids. Yeah. Shalini, we cannot hear you. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. No, we cannot hear you yet. Maybe you can unplug and plug your earpiece again. Shalini, you can also refresh your browser so that you come in again, then it will be clearer. So meanwhile, uh, can I ask Jody more questions while waiting for Shalini to come back? Okay. So uh, Jody, okay. may I know uh, how long you have been working with Well Rehab as an OT? Uh? Uh, so far, I already worked like one year plus. Oh, one year plus? Oh, based uh, on yeah. the things that you share, it doesn't seem like a one year plus uh, <laughs> OP. <laughs> so are you fresh? Uh, are you a uh, grad last two years? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So which branch do you attach now? Uh, I'm now attached at the like BM branch at Penang. Oh, I see BM branch at yeah. Penang. Okay. So uh, just wonder like, because we, I understand well, we have also have other uh. Uh, other than speech therapy, uh, speech therapist, and then OT, you also have visual. So usually for the children that come to your, uh, your clinics, right? So how do you decide that when is like both of you therapy will concurrent do do for the child, or you will only do one after the another? Oh, so we will like. See, first we will assess if the child already have like attention, able to follow, able to sit still. So we can like just like direct like refer them to like speech, speech therapy. So if the child is like just like come into the room and run, run here and run there and and we will personally will suggest to suggest to like uh, occupational therapy first to let them like able to like care. Can you hear now? Suddenly no sound. <laughs> yeah, better. Jody, okay. Jody can is it my 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 mic my, my I cannot hear Jody saying the last word. After attention then don't know more. Jody, you may finish your sentence which was missed out by Miss Elia. You can clear it up. <laughs> so so this now can hear it? I, we, I think we missed the last sentence. Cannot hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, got someone uh, posted here, cannot hear. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, just now you say that when the child able to, it's like if let's say they are running around, then what's next? We, we cannot follow anymore. Oh, oh after the child, oh, the child run there, so we will like first we will like recommend for like occupational therapy first. So after after we have like to train train the child and they will and see they were more stable, like able to follow instruction or sit still and pay attention, then we will we will refer to speech therapy that and we sometimes we will do uh usually we do twice. We do OT and speech together, then we can see the the progress 
more obviously. Hmm, I see. That's that's great. That's great. Welcome back, Sarini. Thank you, Mister. Yeah, sorry about the connection problem. No issues. So we can continue with the therapies done by speech therapists for the autistic yeah. kids. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So mostly speech language uh, therapies will go with the goals of improving their spoken language, learning non-verbal skills, and more. Well, other than that, we have some of uh, skills which we need to get pro of the child also. So such as the oral motor exercise will be plan the goals for oral motor exercise to achieve all their vegetative skills, such as the blowing skills. Their, if there is a, some of the autistic child having a drooling problem, so we will do oral motor exercise to strengthen their muscles, jaws, the mandibles, everything. So it's to to avoid the drooling and their sucking skills some may having problem in their suckings and blowing mostly most of the children will having blowing problem so we'll go for the, the oral motor exercise massaging and training them with the blowing shows them with the visual cues tactile cues and everything so later on we'll have an articulation uh, goals that will make them to clearer speech sounds will show them a um, correct place and manner of how to place the tongue, how to place their lips, how to place the uh, teeth and everything to pronounce a correct, clearer speech. And for some people, some kids, some children with autism find that using a picture or technology to communication is more effective than speaking. They might having a they might be speech therapy will be having an intensive uh, intervention with them for more than few years so still the child is non-verbal then we'll move to the uh, augmentative and alternative communication it's called as AEC there is a uh, quite a lot of stages and uh, branches in that aided unaided and everything so in most the most common AEC is a sign language uh, picture exchange communication we call as a PAX that is a most common uh, child with autism will be using and uh, other devices speech output devices also will be using and later on we move with the social skills mostly speech therapy can will help people to work on the goals of uh, related to the social communication we we'll sometimes offer the social skills uh, within the groups in that all in one one to one therapy for the child to communicate so they may also uh, work on coaching the children uh, adult children in different ways settings in the schools and then the playgrounds like that and later on the feeding challenges some parents might be having problems to feed their child some kids will be having a picky eater some kids will be only drinking milk for five years old so they find hard to feed the child with the rice or some children will only wanted to eat noodles they don't want the vegetables they don't even want to take a fruits so it's they might having a lot of challenges some children don't want to have a brushing teeth this is all will come along with the sensory problems of the child so this we'll have work on with that feeding challenges also and pragmatic skills is most to the our facial expressions body language gestures so they might be having a problem to translate how the parents is showing if they're angry they might having a problem of finding out what is the expression of other people is going to convey to me so this is all will be other other goals will be taken other than only the language part and most mostly we work on the functional communication is the basic goals we'll be working on that is a way to break down uh, barriers to a children independence that where the children will come along to ask their needs they are what they want their rejection this is the main goals we'll be working on 
the initial goals we work on speech language pathology. So yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you, Shalini. So let's move on to the next part. So we will ask uh, Miss Elia on what's the importance of early hearing detection and early intervention. Yeah, so uh, I think um, over here, uh, we just want to send out the message is that uh, the child only grow up up to maybe age of six, then we have to prepare them to enter the primary school. So when they enter the primary school, actually all the development they should um, already catch up to a certain limit. For example, maybe uh, before they enter the school, they are able to sit still and then they are able to follow this instruction. They also can hear well uh, whatever teachers say so they can hear based on the listening uh, skills, the hearing ability, then they are able to write back what teacher asking them to do for, for the homework or even digest the knowledge uh, or the things that being said by teachers. So all this actually, uh, all the development have to be well developed before we can really prepare them to enter the school. Otherwise, um, we can see that it's a big gap. Maybe if let's say they don't have this development, um, how, how did it reach the, uh, according to their peers uh, level, then they, they will be very struggle in learning. Maybe their academic start to drop, then then it will actually also affect their self esteem and all this. So over here, uh, we uh, as an audiologist, as in audiology line, we do have something called newborn hearing screening. So normally for the newborn hearing screening, uh, we our aim is uh, to achieve early hearing detection and also the intervention. So what we normally do in all the government hospitals or certain government hospital at least, uh, we will perform this OAE and then from the OAE test, we can actually find out whether the child passed or um, need to refer for more diagnostic tests. So if let's say by first month we have carried out the test, we realize that, oh, this baby, yeah, by first month we already realize that cannot pass the OE. So on maybe the second or the third month, we will also do another test. But if let's say still refer, then we will proceed to do the diagnostic test. So usually if follow the protocol right, then we can actually uh, uh, diagnose the child having hearing problem by the age of six, and then we can start to let them wear the hearing aids. So if let's say we can let the child to wear the hearing aids by the age of six, and then um, they are actually having the potential to achieve the normal speech and language development milestone as if what Jody and also Shalini shared earlier. Okay. Then, uh, uh, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> but however, today we are actually talking more on the autism kids. So I just want to bring out some, some technology that is uh, um, uh, used in overseas and then with this technology, actually the child is able to hear more and at the same time can pay attention more to the teacher, to the, to the therapist or even to their parents who want to communicate to their child. Okay, so this technology is called Roger. So uh, I would like to show a video here. Can you hear the sound? I'm Lynn um, and this is Kira. I'm John and Kira's dad. We found out uh, when Kira was born um, that she was mild and moderately deaf um, in both ears. So she was fitted with hearing aids at 18 months. I'm um, in my first year at City University London doing a music degree. I was about 11 when I couldn't hear myself in choir. I was born deaf, so I never really knew what it was like being able to hear. 
and my family were here in the US, so they didn't really know what it was like being deaf. I knew that there were things that my friends could do that I couldn't do, and that there were things that I was missing out on. Even with traditional hearing instruments, there has been a, a barrier to some of the environments that people can can work in and socialise in. And I think Roger is actually breaking down those barriers. The phone app Roger has made a huge impact on my life. It's much clearer um, than any of the other devices I've used before. What Roger can do is allow people with any form of hearing loss, whether it's mild to moderate, severe to profound, to stay in communication with each other. It uses all the latest technology to provide very, very crystal clear sound for those users. I would definitely recommend the equipment. Um, it's easy to use, um, it's light, um, the nursery staff have never had an issue using it. I go out shopping with my friends and my friend can wear it um, around their neck. If you can use the phone app Roger system wherever you are, even at home, then your child can get a much clearer understanding of your voice. I was amazed to see how much better I could hear the television. Um, I was using it to speak to my friends and my family on the phone, so it already had a much better benefit to my life. I tell myself off a bit now because I should have given things more of a chance when I was younger because they would have benefited me even more then. The element we're most excited about is the, the element that it changes people's lives and it's moving the industry forward and you know we continue with that as our as our quest as an organization uh you can unmute first misalia Okay, sorry. All right, so uh, just now, I'm not sure, uh, Jody and Shani, is it the first time you saw this kind of video? Like yes. the Roger system, right? So so I would strongly recommend uh, that you can consider to use it in your therapy session. So what happened is that we all understand that if, let's say, for our speech, uh, when we talk to each other, normally uh, what happened is that the we whether whether or not we can hear each other clear or not is depending on how loud you speak and how how far you stand from us right so if let's say the distance increase the speech that go to your ear might be softer am i right so for something like georgia this is actually a device whereby the user uh, which is for example the child can wear it in their ear but whatever the therapist or the parents speak you can see they are wearing something like a neck, uh, a mic over here. So when we speak over here, the distance is closer. So we are able to give a higher speech to noise ratio to the children. So meaning to say that the children will always hear slightly louder compared to you directly speak here and the children is like running around and then uh, or like standing quite far away. Lah. So with the slightly higher speech level, that can actually improve their attention. Like for example, I just received a testimonial today that uh, my clients just now that I mentioned, uh, two and a half years old, but now has been fitted hearing aid for like almost three to half, three, three to four years. Now, because he started to enter kindergarten school, so he used the wireless mic more frequent. So the teacher actually feedback that uh, whenever Lele is using the, the microphone, uh, when the teacher speak through the microphone, right, he can see the child eyes are is like, hmm, like widen. So I am sure that when widen, meaning you actually uh uh get their attention first lah. Then before that, before you start talking or teaching, that will actually um more input will go go to their ears. So yeah, so that is one of the testimonial that I received from my clients. And then uh, from the research wise also, like for example, this one is from the University of Melbourne. They, they also share that from their six week study uh, for the school age children with the autism kit, FM system, 
provide significant sing listening in noise, communication and educational benefit. La. Children could hear the teacher words better, communicate with their fellow students better and were generally more engaged in classroom activity than without the FM system. So uh, most of the children also wanted to keep using their FM system after the trial had ended. La. So this can actually show uh, that the FM system can help the children to uh, pay attention more and help in their education as well like in future. Okay. All right. So another study also showed that uh, FM system significantly improved the speech recognition in noise of children diagnosed with ASD or ADHD. Uh, because um, as their study, they, they record uh, their task behavior. So somehow, whenever a uh, noise, noisy environment or whenever the child is not one-to-one -one session, but rather they are placed in the group sessions, like classroom setting, actually for them, it's very struggle, right? Because they have too much of uh, input. So that's why using FS system can actually make them stay more focused to what teacher uh, have said. Uh, using the device uh, so the teacher is able to capture the student attention better so that is why i strongly advise uh, maybe in future you all can put it inside um, together with your therapy okay so okay next is uh, we i think that's all from my part yep okay so thank you so much miss elia for the wonderful sharing so now let's hear it uh, a bit of experience of occupational therapies and speech therapies in dealing with autistic kids in their journey. So Jodi, maybe you can share some of your experience first. Okay. So now I, I just like share one one case which is a like three years old girl. Actually like mm -hmm. he come come out come for rehab like for like at least like six months already. So for her first first time coming, he just uh she she is like quite very difficult to like sit still and like to like go go around and she is uh very very like the the ball pool and the, 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 I got one chance to get get her to like try the ball pool, but after that he, he uh she is difficult to come out already and I'm. Um, because it's at the end of the session, so when she go out, it's like crying because he, she don't want to like get out from the ball pool. So after that, after that, I I did not like let him like let her go to the ball pool again. But during the first few session, actually she is very like very rigid, and he uh what what she want to do, then she want to do. If I ask her to like do other things, he will like he was struggles and crying. Uh, Crying, crying very loud and however after that after that in the in my section i slowly like help help her to like uh, help her to train her to like okay able to follow instructions and uh, slowly guide her how to follow and what she, she had to done before he before she wants to continue the activity she like so after a few months i can see her progress like currently she able to like Okay, when I call her, she she will respond. I call, I ask if she like go away. I ask, I, I call her name and ask ask her to like come back to sit. She will now I come can come back on, and sit and able to like co complete the task and keep all keep all the things. Before that, when I ask her to like keep all the keep keep the things, she will she will difficult to like finish the task. Uh, I and don't want to like finish. So how after after like train and after after that uh after like do it to the sessions and uh, and now she can currently get better and also and she start have some speech with it so she able to able to like name the colors and able to like look at you and come come with uh come with me so here is a one experience i meet that like, it's quite um that i can see the progress for progress for her like to ever to like in in learning 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 stage she will like more very uh, stable now yeah wonderful okay roughly how many sessions taken for the child to see the progress 
Uh, actually, it's like depend, depend, the, mm-hmm. depend on the child because some 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 child is like very like a little bit serious and some is very like mild. So usually, uh, if want to like say like at least like two three months, you can see like the progress. Hmm. Okay. Nice. So Shalini, would you mind to share your experience as well? Yes. Yeah. So I will also like to share one of my kids. So mm. he is now around seven years old, standard one. So he's already discharged with the speech. No more speech is needed for him. So previously when he come to to us, he was not interested to come into the center at all. He was just uh, stay downstairs. He don't want to come. He was very scared to get into the center. So that much of uh, behavior things, he's very rigid, sensory problems, all is that. So later on, he used to go for OT for quite frequently every day in a week OT then later on after a few months of OT he was prepared for speech then he come he was going on going along uh, around three more than three years for speech so previously he never able to ask anything his needs he not even able to talk and then after uh, intensive in therapy he comes weekly once and then he was slowly progressed previously he having the tantrum he rejection he will stick to one one toy stick to one book only that thing so we cannot even uh, change to another book it's very difficult with him so we need to divert a lot of things with him so I Okay. Okay, I think she's having some internet issues. Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think she's coming back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about my connection. So previously okay. he like to snatch the things. He will even beat beat us that much of tantrum. So I even have got beaten from him. So. This is all a good experience for me, but I'm really happy and the parents also happy. Now, he able to ask question, ask question, narrate the story, he able to read. His Chinese also is very good. His Bahasa is also very good. So he's already discharged with the speech and he only undergoing OT with our occupational therapy. So this is like the mother is also happy and I'm also very happy with his progress and everything. Yeah. Wow. So, may I know is the kids actually when they come to you, uh, is you say it's about three, three and a half years old, right? Now it's seven. Am uh, I right? Now seven, yeah. I think three huh? something. So, uh, so the child also presented with speech delay as well. Yes. Previously, he he was start to talk one word, only one word to me. He know only the. Familiar mm. things he knows. Then he goes to the stage of echolalia. Everything we tell, mm. he keep on repeating. He never understand. So slowly the stages he reach slowly one by now he can understand. Now actually, like the mother, the mother was so concerned because he coming with me for English only. We will be talking English, so I have problem with Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> so that the mother was very concerned about Mandarin. So she's like very scared whether he will pick up the Mandarin or not. And as soon as uh, we already discharged the speech, he, he picked the Mandarin very fast, even though he never go to the Mandarin classes. So even I have one more patient also, he's also standard one, like same, same stages, both of them. He's also Bahasa also. Now he's in the stage of translating me to Bahasa. So I will ask him, uh, what is uh, sun? He will say matahari. What is eyes? He will say uh, mata. So he is uh, in the stage of translating. This is one more child. So both is considered same level of uh, this thing. But he's still going on speech because he's, there is some equilibrium going on with him. So there mm-hmm. is 
different kids, different child is in the different stages. We cannot even compare. Oh, their child is like this and my child is like this. So we cannot even compare. They have their strength and ability, plus and minus. Mm, correct. So I think uh, the, the sharing here uh, also share that the key thing is early intervention, early detection. And the early intervention definitely make the difference, right? So, uh, yes. like your child, if let's say imagine they they the parents don't is in the denial, so they don't want to accept their child is like having, uh, being diagnosed with autism or whatever, they just reject any therapy. So maybe seven uh few years later, like now seven years, so the child not not even get the chance to enter the normal school or any school, lah because of the behavior problem. Okay, so thank you for your sharing. I just have one question to Sarini, because as a speech therapy, you always need to do a lot of speech assessment for those child, uh, the um, then, uh, maybe presented with speech delay, but from your all the cases that you have seen, uh, actually how many percent are having hearing loss or even like having autism? Do you have the statistic? in your hand or maybe under the case that you have seen before? Uh, for autism to the hearing loss, it's a bit uh, less, quite three or four like that. But mostly if they're having hearing loss, they will have some of uh, associated syndrome. And one is like global development delay. So mm. totally the development also is delayed. But she is improving now. She able to walk nicely. Previously, when she come to me, she was a bilateral uh, hearing aid user. But previously, when she come, she cannot even walk, like um, very clumsy like that. But now she can able to, she more aware of the sounds and about the, she's more to the reading part. Hmm. So she can detect the words, what is the, what I'm showing is apple, and she can pick it up. So even though she's not focusing and aware of the hearing part, but she's going in the academic side. So I'm happy she's, <laughs> she's coming in this way. So it's like not, not much. It's very, very less actually who having hearing loss. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's true. Lah. I mean, uh, uh, if let's say follow the normal standard statistic, only 3 to 5 child per 1,000 kids, meaning 0 0.3 to 0 0.5% of the kids uh, may have hearing loss. But without the hearing sense uh, working, I would say it can cause a lot of problems. So because without a good input, you won't have a good uh, output as well. And for your for just some of the patients that you have mentioned, uh, you say that now the kids is no no longer so dependent on the hearing side, right? I'm but sure she's that still if wearing the hearing aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's not so dependent on hearing aids, meaning to say that something can be improved for the hearing device. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. sometimes uh yeah. She's not able to take the aided audiogram. I've been asking the mother for the aided audiogram. So the child still cannot sit still to the <laughs> response just now when Miss Alia told you have one more client as you cannot was very tense with the client so even the mother yeah. was so tense to bring her to do the aided one so they mm. still make it on hold for her yeah yeah so then we have to I mean as an audiologist if let's say in my clinic we will do some other uh, uh, tests uh, maybe through the question S or maybe uh, we will do the RECD ear to couple of different so that we can at least verify what is the hearing loss uh whether the amplification given to the child is in, is enough or not because if let's say not enough then of course we cannot expect that the child can have maybe near normal hearing ability uh, even after wearing the hearing aids so uh so something can be do more uh, we can check off life after this okay so i think um now it's already past 10 10 so that's all for our today sharing so let's see if there is any question from the floor yeah. okay uh we have one from gladys 
So the, her question is, may I know who should I visit to diagnose or rule out autism if I suspect my child may have autism? So who's going to answer this question? I think everyone, they should visit all three of us to rule out one by one. So the first thing will be the speech. If they have any speech delay, because we can identify it easily. So they can go for the speech therapist. And if they have any behavior issues, they can go for OT. And if you can see your child is not responding to you, if you call her name or his name, then maybe you can come for a hearing test as well. So the earliest move you are taking, the more the good it is. Lah. Yeah, to add on on that, actually in Malaysia, I would suggest every child to be under uh, one pediatrician care. Lah. So your pediatrician should advise you and refer you uh, to maybe refer to you to do speech uh, assessment whenever the child is presented with speech delay or even if let's say they show some, um, some how to say, the uh, autism symptoms, like just like uh, what uh, Pravina has uh, presented earlier. So uh, then they should also uh, maybe if you want to rule out autism, then I think the qualified person to do could be the child psychology. Am I right, Jody? Yeah, so uh, so the child psychology would be the one to rule out. But if let's say um, other than that, uh, developmental pediatrician also could be the one to to actually after they have done the general assessment, they rule out. However, I think uh, the key here is not being very um, obsessed with whether the child is having autism or not having autism. But, the, but it's more to, if let's say they presented with some symptoms, then we should, we should address the symptoms. We should actually uh, carry out the early intervention, providing them the therapy so that they can cope with whatever behavior they have, they have faced. Uh, anything to add on, Shalini or Jyoti? So, may I add on? So, yeah, yeah. as yeah. Ms. Hanya said, everything is correct. So, other than that, we are providing, it's not like, if you find there is any signs and you're having a doubt, your child is not having eye contact or not responding to you, he's himself not, not interacting with others or playing himself, stick to the one toys, like that you can seek out to us for the initial screening. Our screening is free for you. So we'll having a professional therapist uh, will screen up for you, rule up whether your child can, what is the problem and everything. So we will refer to the OT, occupational therapist or speech language pathology. If you, if you find it very difficult to go to the pediatrician because some parents will have a problem, they don't want to get diagnosed first. So just want to know whether the, my child having a problem in the initial stages or not. So we're having a great pain screening. It's just around 10 to 15 minutes to your flexible time. Okay. Thank you, Shalini. Yep. So let's go on to another question popped up by Mohana Baskaran. So her question was, besides sending the child to speech and OT assessment, what should the parents do? Is there any home assessment or tools for the parents to do at home with their child? So, is there any answer from Jodi and Shalini? Do you guys have any home assessment or tools? Uh, okay. Oh, usually, uh, if, uh, besides that, if you want, like, if you want like see how how is your child then you want to like we also have like house uh but so suddenly we also you can like do free screening just now Charlene say and what parents can do at home if you want to like ask your child like to follow follow instructions or you want to like to like struck um uh to manage their behavior you can firstly you have can like the structures then first they, uh, uh, today I give you a like for example today I give you a task then you have to finish within 10 if I say the target is 10 then you have to finish this is like uh, the is uh, such a simple action for them to, like, for, 
to follow instruction. And one of the simple activity is, for example, after playing, they have to like keep their try, keep their try. If they don't want to keep, then you have to like hold their hand and ask them to keep. Uh, at least you have finished, then we can turn uh, change to the another activity. And you can also like find in find in the some website. They also, I I think uh, many website also can also like give you some ideas in how to like how how what. What kind of activity you can like, like self made instead of buying the toys, and you can like do it, do it some simple activities at home, and we also like can we as a OT and ST, we also can like suggest you what activity you can simply find and simply do at home that in order to try to improve your child's progress. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to add on, I think Mohana, the other thing is that you can watch back our old uh, presentation earlier, whereby we show you the child development journey. So if let's say uh, your child is actually not follow the journey, then I think it's also a red flag that you should bring them for a professional assessment is better. Lah. Okay. So we will move on to the next question, which was from Ellen. How to solve the problem when patient no response, have tantrum and etc. So I think speech therapist can explain about this. Okay, how to solve the problem with patient no response and how having a tantrum. Response, no response, it means that like they are not responding to your instruction. Miss Ellie? So, I mean, like, the question was there. So, maybe you can give. Yes, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Salini, they will be have delay. <laughs> Yeah. Cannot Q and A like this. Is this answer? Oh yeah. Okay. She said yeah. They have thirty seconds delay. Mm. Okay, so maybe you can give them uh, more to the physical task. Make them uh, the energy calm down first for them. Running physical task like as OTC move to the task, they calm down them first. So the the energy is already dropped down. So that time when you give the instruction, they they will listen to you. Mm. Mm. I, I I would oh, suggest okay. yeah. Okay, no, no, I'm just wanted to say maybe uh, for her question is a bit too technical. Uh, we welcome you to WhatsApp or maybe uh, directly message to Well Rehab Facebook. And then I think they maybe if let's say you needed more uh, answer, then their yeah, customer service can provide you the free uh, screening as per what they have mentioned. So, because the time is running out, yeah. yeah. So, that's where our sharing in this live today ends. So, parents or caretakers who have joined with us today, who wants to learn more on it, our service can contact us by calling to the number there and our professionals will be ready to help you further. So I hope this FB Live today was informative and we hope that it created a clear understanding to those who are not very sure about multidisciplinary professionals available for kids with autism and their roles in assessing and managing them. So thank you, Miss Elia, Jody and Shalini for joining hand for this great live. And it was a pleasure for us to have you guys with us today. So everyone who have joined this Facebook Live, please do share this to your family and friends. And thank you for listening. Let's educate together, learn together, to live together. So have a great night, 
everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.